Hi, <clears throat> I'm Ojo from Ojo's World. Um, now, please forgive my. Oh, what's the uh, what's the best way to use your complete uselessness at doing a vlog? Because it's not something I've ever done before. So there may be shaky cameras. There may be all sorts of trouble going on here. I will try my best, however. And what I wanted to do was talk you into talk you into talk you around how I made my little sewing desk. This is basically just a computer desk, <clears throat> a standard in the UK from Argos, £19.99, so call it £20 for argument's sake, uh, just a little desk, it's, it's a basic desk with a small shelf at the bottom and a slide out desk for the keyboard when you're using a standard PC. And I just wanted to show you what I'd done. This, like I say, £20 and some scrap fabric and a staple gun. And I turned this into a nice little portable sewing slash craft uh, desk. So we started off with, first thing, you'll need the scrap fabric. You'll need a, a sewing machine or to be fairly handy with a, um, a sewing needle. Because you do have to do a little bit of stitching together. Firstly would be my little drawer, my amazing little drawer, which I'm quite pleased of. Uh, two scraps of fabric and a little bit of padding was all that was needed for this. The first scrap of fabric is this one. It was sewn into, it was hemmed into an oblong and stitched onto this bit of fabric. This bit of fabric has got a slight, sorry, I'm just tucking things away and tightening them up just to prove a point. This bit of fabric has a little bit of padding, just the thinnest sort of padding that you can get just to, you know, just to stop things moving around so much when it's on there. Because obviously, sometimes you're not thinking, and even though I've made a pincushion, sometimes you just want to jab your needle in and think, oh, right, that's there now. Or, uh, you know, that's just to keep things out of the way and to stop them sliding around a little bit too much. Because on this, the wooden this, they would just slide everywhere. So this was stitched on. This is another fold of the same fabric. Another fold of fabric that is just little bit of stuffing inside, a little bit of wadding, folded up, hemmed and stitched onto here. Makes an ideal, makes an ideal little pincushion. Don't make it too big because you want it to slide nicely under there. Okay, because you don't want it, the, the idea of this is that you can have, have the, the stuff you need to hand, but at the same time you can push it away and there we go, it's tucked underneath. So firstly, like see, this was stitched on, made into pockets there's some extra pins in there there's some needles i can keep my scissors nice and securely on the end there uh, there's a pocket there's my seam guide my magnetic seam guide if for those sewers that know what this is this is my this keeps my seams because i couldn't sew straight if you paid me and that is that is basically it nice and simple and then i staple gunned it simply staple gunned onto this little drawer. I'm not going to show you underneath because it gets really dark and it's a rubbish shot but basically this goes, this is enough fabric to go all the way around and to just not quite join in the middle underneath but there's a, there's, it sort of goes that far underneath. So about that far underneath either side, staple gun it back up in the middle and that's it. You've got a nice secure, this isn't going anywhere, this is nice and secure. And with this underneath, I thought I could use I could use this little shelf underneath. This is a good place to store the machines I'm not using when I'm sewing. So, for example, if I'm making at the moment I'm making new cushions and uh, throw cushions for the house to match it up. A lot of the fabric that I'm using is quite heavy duty and frays. So this is my overlocker for fraying, and then I'd be working on my sewing machine on the top. But what happens when I'm using this sewing machine, the other sewing machine, and this one, as you know, everything's got a foot pedal and all the wires, it gets in the way. So, out of an old sheared dress, I cut the top off. You know those little, a lot of time you get them for little girls where they've got a sheared top and then the flowy little skirt underneath. This is just basically the sheared top part cut off. Hemmed on the bottom, as you can see, I've just hemmed it on the bottom. And then again, staple gunned it onto there. Now, because I've staple gunned it, it's lost a lot of the stretch from the back. So this now has left the give at the front, which is enough to fit. I, I can easily fit my two pedals in there, but it's not so much give 
that it falls out and my pedals are dropping everywhere. And now, whilst you're looking at that, you're probably wondering what this is. This was my, my piece de resistance. This, I am so pleased with this little thing. This is the top of a squash bottle. Quite frankly, you could use any plastic bottle. Um, a, a pop bottle, just cut the top off. Give it a, you know, give yourself a decent sort of size. This is probably a width and a half of my hand. I made a pocket to go around it using two strips of fabric. So you've got one strip of fabric that goes around this way and seams up at the back there. And then you have another strip of fabric that works underneath. Now, the reason I did it like this is because it's easier to slide in and out. It's a bit, it's snug, so you can't do it one-handed. But if I was to do it two-handed, I'd have one hand here, I'd put the other hand in the pocket there and I can just pull this out. This fabric was staple gun there at the back and this is a little bin. For those little scraps of fabric that you're being cut off, if you've ever used an overlocker before, you'll know that the overlocker, a lot of them cut and you've got little thin strips of fabric everywhere, little strips of little bits of cotton that you're cutting off. I'm not an untidy sewer. I don't like little bits of fabric and, and cotton everywhere because then I have to clean it up anyway. So this is my little bin. Perfect for a little sewer and a little crafter as well. If you were using this to do any sort of paper crafts, ideal because you've got a nice flat desk to work on for paper crafts. You've got a little place here to keep all your little bits of fabric and then a little bits, sorry, little bits of fabric if you're working on paper crafts. But you could use these. You could even use uh, plastic, clear plastic pockets and attach them on. And you could keep all your stickers and pens and, you know, etc, etc and scissors all inside there. You've then got a place to throw your rubbish when you've got little scraps of paper and I'm not into paper crafts, so I'm not sure what you'd use a big pack pocket for, but it's a good idea. The other thing I'm also considering doing is on the top here is either um, attaching a ruler to it with glue or maybe just getting a permanent marker and marking the inches and centimetres just along the front here so that when I'm sewing, I've got a little measurement guide to keep me, to keep me going. So anyway, I do hope that somebody else gives it a go because I've told one person about it and she rushed straight off to um, have a go herself and then sent me a photo and it was a fantastic little desk she made with a little pocket underneath as well. So do give it a go. Do let me know if you try it because I would love to see some pictures. You can find me across the internet, Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Everywhere you look for me, I am Ojo's World. Um, and I would, and even on Instagram as well. So if you'd like to show me the pictures of what you've managed to achieve yourself, do let me know. And if you have any questions, just ask the questions on this video and I will answer. I am pretty quick at answering questions. So thank you very much for watching and I do hope it's been useful. Bye now.